lived in a house with big picture windows. They had wide sills, perfect for lazing upon. Cat didn't know what color the house was or what the outside of it looked like. Green tendrils of something crept upwards into his view, but Cat didn't know what was growing right beneath the window. He never had the chance to look at these things. The only times he'd ever been outside, he was carried in a dark box on his way to people who made him sit on a slippery metal surface. They petted him, then prodded him, then poked him with a needle, all while talking to him in a syrupy voice. Just one more. You're doing such a good job, Whiskers. It was awful. Cat did not like those times outside the house. Thankfully, it didn't happen too often. Most of the time, Cat spent his life on the sills of the windows, flicking his tail in the air, daydreaming about being out there in the vast beyond. It tore him up inside a bit, but he didn't do anything about it except daydream. Until one day, Cat saw something he'd never seen before in his life. Cat was lazing on the windowsill. The sky was a bright blue, and he could hear birds singing. The sound drove Cat crazy. He imagined himself chasing those sweetly singing birds. He flicked his tail and tried to put it out of his mind. After all, it was time for his third nap of the morning. Cat yawned, stretching his mouth impossibly wide. (sighs) When he snapped his mouth shut, he opened his eyes. He saw something out on the sidewalk. He blinked. He must have gotten it wrong. He couldn't actually be seeing what he thought he was seeing. Out on the sidewalk, there was a human a very tall person wearing strange boots. Why do they wear foot coverings at all, Cat wondered. But there was something more important on which to focus. This tall, strange-booted human was gripping a thin rope. The rope was trailing behind him. The rope was attached to a cat. Cat felt his stomach twist in knots. The cat on the end of the rope was scrabbling at the ground like it contained an underground reservoir of catnip. The human tugged at the rope while smiling and laughing as the cat was dragged along on the ground behind it. Every now and then, the cat awkwardly scurried its feet along, reluctantly participating in its own embarrassment. Now, Cat had seen plenty of dogs attached to thin ropes. He'd seen how they merrily, jauntily strode in front of their human people. He'd seen them hold their heads up proudly as if it was all some great honor. On occasion, he'd heard a person walk by another person with a dog and say something like, Who's walking who? The dog always smiled at this with satisfaction. Cat rolled his eyes just thinking about it. But a cat on a rope? Unthinkable. Cat watched as his poor neighbor was pulled across the ground collecting actual dirt in her fur, which would have to be cleaned nonstop for days, no doubt, until she and her human person of questionable character vanished around the corner. The sky on this day was alarmingly blue. It was spitefully beautiful. The sun was an agonizingly cheerful shade of yellow. Cat went to his scratching post and scratched until he felt the knots in his tummy begin to unravel. He sipped the water his person had set out for him. He nibbled a kibble his person had provided. All of his needs taken care of by people. 
For the first time, this thought sent a chill down Cat's spine. Cat's person returned to the house. She pet Cat's head and went off to make strange movements in front of the colorful rectangle with the moving pictures. Person did this a lot. Cat found it to be very unsettling. But Cat was not in the mood to think about his person's odd movements in front of that colorful rectangle. He went back to flicking his tail and gazing out the window. In that moment, the human person, enthusiastically doing her high kicks and planks, would not have noticed anything different about Cat. Nothing at all. But in truth... After Cat saw his neighbor being pulled across the ground out on the sidewalk, everything changed. Cat began plotting his escape. Well, that might be an exaggeration. Cat, technically called Whiskers by the human people in his life, but to whom names like this were totally absurd, of course I have Whiskers. Human people don't seem to name their babies eyebrow or toenail, now do they? As you can see, Cat got sidetracked quite a bit. The point is, he didn't actually do much plotting. He simply tried to escape. Every time one of Cat's human people went to the door, he attempted to run between their legs. And every time, those human people's hands with the unfairly effective opposable thumbs would reach down, grab him from above, and deposit him back inside. They would sometimes shake a finger at him and say, Whiskers, no, which Cat found very funny. He never laughed, of course. Each day was the same. Run out the door, hands grab from above. Run out the door, hands grab from above. He missed some opportunities. One time, he waited and waited and waited and waited, and just as the human person opened the door, a cricket launched itself in front of Cat. Obviously, Cat could not allow this cricket to leap away without cocking his head at it, pawing at it, and staring at it until his eyes got very big. Cat heard the door shut. The cricket leapt away perfectly well. That cricket even sang as it leapt out of sight into the abyss of a coat closet. A few days later, Cat had a clear opening. The human person was distracted by someone at the door. The door opened. Hello there. We're just doing a sprinkler installation for your neighbors, and we wanted to offer you a free estimate. How much does the estimate cost? It's entirely for Cat ran and ran and ran and water is on me water is on me water is on me cat feeling the water drops imagined the sky opening and an endless cascade of rain falling on his beautiful fur cat ran back inside i don't think we need a sprinkler system thanks it was then that cat saw through the open window that the rain was actually a few spare drops coming from the new sprinkler next door. Hmm. A week went by, then another. Cat was feeling lost. He'd had so many failures, he wasn't sure if he wanted to even try anymore. But then... Cat's human person approached the door from the outside. She was carrying about five grocery bags. She opened the door, awkwardly. Cat watched all of this, without helping, of course. What was he, some kind of pack animal? Cat wondered whether by carrying so many bags at once, the person could damage her wrists. And that reminded him of all the strange things he'd seen humans do that cats would never even think of to... Oh, The human person dropped two of the bags and a glass jar of pickles broke in the doorway. Cat froze. This was a clear chance to escape. He had mere moments to make a move. The human person was on the ground trying to pick up the mess. Cat looked out through the door. He saw a person walking by. 
wearing silly boots. Boots. He remembered why he'd hatched this escape plan. He thought of the neighbor cat being dragged across the ground. He ran and ran and ran, and this time there were no hands grabbing him, and there was no water, and there was only fresh air and blue, blue, blue sky and cheerful sun and green all around. Cat immediately stopped and aided Dandelion. Then he hid under a huge metal box on wheels. Cat settled in nicely until, perhaps hours later, he heard this. He felt a great rumbling and because he'd spent the vast majority of his life perched in a window, watching birds and planes and the occasional helicopter, and at one time a very, very lost paraglider, Cat thought the thing atop him was about to take off, leave the ground, and fly away. He froze in place and tucked his head and braced himself for the great rushing of wind that would soon come from the power of this flying machine lifting up and away. And while he waited for that, the metal box on wheels rolled out of the driveway and down the street. Cat felt the sun on his back and peeked up. And seeing only trees and sky and houses, he shrieked and darted down the sidewalk to the next car. Cat huddled himself beneath it, and, exhausted from this strenuous two minutes of activity, immediately fell asleep. While he slept, that car rolled away too. Cat was having a rather pleasant dream about crickets when something prodded him awake. Cat looked up. The sky was endless, massive. It felt like he could be swallowed upwards into it. The sun was blinding. Whenever the sun was this bright, Cat left his window perch to relax on the rug. The rug was plush and comfortable. It was his favorite place to be, second only to the windowsill. Forgetting where he was, Cat looked around for his rug. There was no rug. Cat blinked against the harsh sun. A figure stood over him, backlit. New to the outdoors, the figure said. The sun graciously slipped behind a cloud, and Cat could finally see who was addressing him. It was another cat. He was scruffy, long in years and short in tail. One of his green eyes was covered with an eye patch. One leg was wrapped in a tattered bandage. Cat just stared, aware of the fact that he was exposed in a strange place. Mmm, your fur looks like you've been pet today. You smell like... Ugh, cinnamon or something. Cat thought back to the cinnamon candle the human people kept on the piano. He thought it smelled nice. I think it smells nice, Cat said immediately regretting saying anything at all. The old cat scowled, glaring at him with his one good eye. Hmm, at least you figured out the problem with the human boxes. Cat glanced back at his box. He saw that the outside of it was red. He saw that the green tendrils visible from his windowsill were attached to a flowering plant. It was pretty. Mm, I, I escaped, if that's what you mean. What are you going to do now? Uh, adventures, mostly. Adventures? Hmm. What kind of adventures? The old cat asked, still scowling. Oh, you know, um, exciting adventures. Exciting adventures like eating dandelions and hiding under wheel boxes? I was just getting started. You won't get too far. Hey, I've been waiting years for this. Weeks, at least. I'm never going back to the human box. Mm, I've seen it before. Cats run outside. Let me guess. 
Broken pickle jar. Cat frowned. Takes a certain type of cat to survive in the wild. I'm a domestic short breed has nothing to do with it. A certain type. Fierce. Unafraid. Independent. No nonsense. No sense of humor, Cat joked. The old cat glared at him. Cat gulped a little. So, it's worth it? To be outside? Worth it? Huh. It's... <coughs> <coughs> the old cat hacked up a hairball. Cat watched it settle into the sidewalk. It's worth it. Unless you'd rather be safe and comfortable. The old cat shuffled away, favoring his bandaged leg. Good luck. You'll need it. You can call me Colonel, by the way. Wait. Uh, Colonel, I, I have some questions for you. But the old cat disappeared under a fence. Cat suddenly felt very small. He looked up at the big human boxes and the towering trees. He heard a loud screech of a bird of prey above and ran away from the sound. He took a turn off the sidewalk onto a small path and followed it behind a house. The house's backyard was exquisite. There were trees snipped into the shapes of animals and spirals. Decorative stones surrounded a small pond. Cat imagined a fish in the pond, and he took a step towards it. Who goes there? Cat whipped around to see a chipmunk holding a golden flag over its shoulder. It was standing in front of a screen door. Behind the screen was a cat with piercing green eyes. She was inside a sunroom at the back of the house. She was a silvery gray with a long fur that glistened in the sun. She had a sparkly clip atop her head, between her ears. It looked uncomfortable. Cat took in the odd scene before him. The long-haired cat, the sunroom, the chipmunk acting as her guard. Who goes there? The chipmunk squeaked again. No need to holler, Quincy. Go make yourself useful. Scan the bushes for any of those shrews that are always milling about. And tell them if they disturb my azaleas again, they shan't be given any books from my library for three weeks. I know how they love to read their precious books. Yes, Duchess, Quincy said, and he dashed into the bushes. While staring at Cat, the Duchess let out a severe meow. Meow. And a human person appeared instantly with a gleaming brush. Cat watched as the human person brushed every inch of her fur. After what felt like days, when the Duchess's fur was gleaming even more than before, she emitted another severe meow. Meow. And the person left. The Duchess looked Cat up and down. You're a house cat. A sad, confused, pathetic little house cat. As she spoke, the Duchess cocked her head to the side, her green eyes fixed on Cat. Cat shifted uncomfortably. How can you tell? I mean, not the sad, pathetic part, because I'm not. How can you tell I'm a house cat? The Duchess let out a long, strange laugh. <laughs> Just look at you. Your fur was brushed yesterday, and you reek of ugh, cinnamon. Blech. One of the long-haired cat's eyes twitched. Cat frowned. I'm not a house cat anymore. Oh. I'm free now. Free? Yes. Interesting. The Duchess studied Cat, and they fell into a silence that was awkward for Cat. 
The Duchess seemed entirely comfortable with it. Cat finally broke the silence. His mind darted to his neighbor attached to the thin rope. He thought of his water and kibble set out for him each day, his complete reliance on people to survive. I'm tired of being a pet. At the final word, the Duchess flinched. Hmm, I see why you are confused. You poor dear. You've got it all wrong. Got what wrong? Cat glanced around, looking for the exits. We are not pets. The Duchess spat the word like it was toxic. The humans serve us. We are... The Duchess continued coughing. One of her humans appeared and swiftly shoved a porcelain cup beneath her mouth. She coughed her hairball into it. The human wiped her mouth with a linen napkin, then disappeared down the hall. We are royalty. That was the end of my sentence back there. Royalty. But if we are royalty, then why... The Duchess held up a paw to cut him off. Her human person was approaching again, taking something out of his pocket. It's time for my show. I never miss my show. Remember what I said. You've got it switched the wrong way round. Go home. Reclaim your throne. And before Cat could ask her the many questions running through his mind, the Duchess turned herself away from him. Loud music came on, and the human person lit up a laser pointer. Its red dot began dancing on the wall. Cat leaned forward to get the Duchess's attention, but her chipmunk guard appeared. Nothing interrupts the Duchess's show. Cat nodded. He padded away, turning back at the edge of the yard to see the Duchess bobbing her head and pawing at the red dot on the wall. Cat slunk down the sidewalk. The sky had turned a charcoal gray sometime in the last hour. Dark clouds swelled above, looking ominous. A cricket leapt out of the grass onto the path in front of Cat, and he suddenly remembered why he wanted to be outside in the vast beyond. Cat chased the cricket, who leapt away, saying, Tra-la-la! Tra-la-la! The cricket hopped. Cat pounced. The cricket hopped. Cat pounced. All the way down the sidewalk. Cat was so entranced with the hopping, singing cricket, he didn't notice it was leading him downtown. The quiet neighborhood had turned into a city street within moments. The buildings were taller, the streets filled with cars. Cat dodged people's feet as he pounced at the cricket. Then it leapt onto a passing bus, singing, Tra-la-la! It was gone. Cat finally noticed his surroundings. The buildings were monstrous. The sounds hurt his ears. A dog strode nearby, walking a person. The dog saw Cat. Cat dashed away into an alley. His chest felt like it might burst. The dog had been so close, its teeth so sharp. Cat just wanted to rest. That's when the rain began. The swollen clouds had had enough. The rain came down in thick sheets. Cat ran under the lip of a dumpster lid. It barely sheltered him from the torrents of rain. His paws were soaked and dirty. The humans on the street opened tiny parachutes above their heads. Some ran for cars or into buildings. Cat thought of the rug back in his human box. He thought of the cinnamon candle, how he liked to paw at the flame as it danced. He watched as a human person's tiny parachute flipped inside out in the wind. I told you you should spend more than $4.99 on one of those. Cat turned to see a scrawny feline 
already soaked, creeping towards him. It squeezed in next to Cat under the lip of the dumpster lid. Oh, hello, Cat said to the stranger. The scrawny cat didn't answer. Do you live out here? Cat asked. Again, no answer. Gosh, this was like pulling teeth. Cat wondered whether this was how all city cats were. Cat remembered what the colonel had said. Fierce, unafraid, independent, no nonsense. Cat decided to try it one more time, since he had nothing else to do, as the rain fell all around them. Hey, what's your name? The scrawny cat finally turned and cocked her head at Cat. Then she swiftly leapt to his other side. Did you say something? Were you talking to me? I'm sorry, I can't hear out of that ear. I'm Sasha, what's your name? Oh, your fur is pretty. Did you come here to hang out with me? Cat blinked. Um, hi, Sasha. I go by Cat for right now. The humans call me Whiskers. Whiskers, huh? It's kind of a silly name. One time, I thought I had heard a human person call their tiny person Arms, and I thought, wow, they're finally being consistent with all this naming stuff, like, across species. But then I realized the tiny person's name was Lars. And I don't think Lars is a body part. I mean, maybe it's on their feet, though. Toes, heel, sole, Lars? Sasha scratched her head with a paw. (laughs) So, Sasha, um, did you escape from a human box? I was born out here. This is my home. It's nicer when it's not raining. Sasha was frighteningly thin. Seeing this, Cat felt very aware of his thick fur and round tummy. Do you like it? Living out here? In the vast beyond? Cat instantly felt hot with embarrassment for saying such a ridiculous thing. Sasha just smiled. Oh, you know, it's fine. There are parades sometimes, like a couple of times a year. City's not really made for cats, you know. It's been harder since the scooters came. One day, no scooters. Next day, scooters everywhere. Gotta watch out for those. My buddy Oscar learned that the hard way. Cat's eyes got big, imagining a fleet of scooters zooming towards him. Would you want to live inside? The rain spattered in puddles all around them. They watched as a very soaked rat scampered across the alley. Oh, interesting thought experiment. Let's see. Worm bed, regular food, no rain, no ants as big as dogs with fangs as big as your paw. Ants with fangs? I'm just kidding. The ants here are normal size. Their fangs are normal size, too. Cat blushed, embarrassed for believing there could be giant ants milling around the city. He tried to picture himself in a year, dodging dogs and trolleys. The cities aren't made for cats, but what about the woods? Maybe I'll go there, Cat said, eyeing Sasha to gauge her response. She shrugged. Lots of foxes out there. Bears. My friend Paul told me there are wolves, but he's been known to make up stories. Like, once he told me there are actually people inside those metal birds that I see flying all the way up in the sky. Isn't that funny? Anyway, he makes things up. Cat gulped, picturing himself trying to escape a wolf. They sat in silence for a while, just watching the rain come down. Then, as abruptly as it had started, it stopped. Okay, so I gotta go. I'm meeting up with a friend and we're gonna paw at the goldfish in the pond down the street. It was nice to meet you. Maybe you can come back and hang out again sometime, do you think? Watch out for the scooters, okay? Like I said, they are everywhere and nobody really knows how to use them. Sasha meowed a goodbye and Kat was alone in a drenched city surrounded by people closing up their tiny parachutes. Kat stalked off knowing there was something he had to see with his own eyes. It was evening by the time Cat made it. He'd exited the city, wended his way through a leafy neighborhood, and followed the scent of forest animals, which was tricky after the rain. But he made it to the wild. Cat felt a jolt of panic when a family of deer passed in front of him, 
He'd never seen a deer in his life, and he wondered if these were the wolves Sasha's friend Paul had told her about. But the deer stooped to eat leaves, and their feet looked harmless. Cat relaxed. He scratched a tree to unwind some of his stress. His tummy started roiling with hunger. His hunger fueled his excitement as he imagined snatching a mouse or a small bird to eat. Cat felt like every cell within him lit up in concert as he began to prowl, feeling as though the instincts baked into his bones over millennia were finally expressing themselves. He shook his head in disbelief that he'd spent so many years tamely nibbling on kibbles next to a drying machine set to the delicate cycle. Cat was a wild hunter, and this was his moment. But the moments began to run together into many moments, and then hours. Cat prowled around, but every time he got close to a mouse or a bird's nest or anything else, his prey escaped. Once he was closing in on a little dormouse when an owl swooped out of the darkness and snatched it up with its talons. Don't eat me, please. I'm sorry, but I'm very hungry. As the sun began to rise, Cat gave up. He reset his ambitions. He caught... A grasshopper. That was his dinner. He had never wanted a kibble so badly in his life. After finishing the grasshopper, Cat groomed himself as best he could. His fur was matted and scraggly. He licked it over and over, trying to put it back the way it had been. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw something moving. Cat looked up to see... The colonel. He was carrying a chipmunk in his mouth and running through the trees. Cat followed him, his head full of questions for the one cat who told him to avoid going home at all costs. I need to know what he knows. The colonel was faster than he looked, even with a bandaged leg. Cat could barely keep him within his sights as they raced through the trees. Cat followed the colonel onto a paved path. It led to a sidewalk alongside a neighborhood street. Cat watched the colonel round a corner. He followed, and then he stopped short as he took in the shocking scene before him. He hid behind a tree to get a safe look. The colonel climbed up to the door of a human box and set the chipmunk on the welcome mat. The door opened and a person appeared. She smiled at the colonel, then frowned at the chipmunk. I told you to stop bringing me presents, you little rascal. The colonel shrugged and tossed the chipmunk in the bushes. The person reached down and picked up the colonel. He nuzzled against her. She took his bandaged paw in her hand. Colonel Cuddles, you need a fresh bandage, sir. Colonel Cuddles? Cat felt all of the questions seep out of his brain onto the sidewalk. The wise grisly old cat who said the word safety like it was a poisonous caterpillar he'd eaten by mistake and had to spit out? That colonel was a pet? Cat watched as the person carried Colonel Cuddles inside the human box. Cat bolted forward and crept up to the window. He saw the person replace Colonel Cuddles' bandage. She set out some food in a bowl in the kitchen. She brushed Colonel Cuddles' matted fur. I can't take any more of this. Cat sank down from the window. His mind was blank. The sun had come up. Cat slipped away, back into the trees. Cat woke up with a jolt. He could feel something crawling up his leg. He looked down and saw a ladybug. 
The ladybug was entirely unbothered by Cat, even as he started shaking his leg to throw it off. Cat had only seen ladybugs a few times and had no idea if they were poisonous. Uh, could you get off me, please? Oh, is this your leg? My eyes are going. I thought it was a very mossy log. My most sincere apologies. The ladybug flew off Cat, landed nearby, and continued walking. Cat stretched and yawned. His neck was sore from sleeping in a weird position. His fur was rumpled. It took him a second to remember why he was outdoors, in the forest, and not on his rug. All right, I'm wild now. It took him another second to remember Colonel Cuddles and the chipmunk and the human person. Cat felt the confusion settle back into his mind. Why did he lie to me? Answers. That was what he needed. But he also needed food. Cat scowled as he remembered his hunting failures the night before. He needed a real meal. And the only cat who might be able to help him get one was nowhere near the woods. Cat jumped to his feet and headed off through the trees. He found Sasha quicker than he expected. She was digging in a trash can, not far from where they'd met, in the middle of the city. Cat opened his mouth to get Sasha's attention, but something leapt into it. Something moving. Ew. Cat was hungry, but he was not a fool. He spat the thing out onto the sidewalk. It was a wolf spider. Blah. Some cats don't mind spiders, but Cat was not a fan. Too crunchy. Also too many shoelaces. Cat noticed the wolf spider was holding a tiny laptop. What's your ID number? My what? Name? Uh, Cat. Oh my. Okay, Cat. Let me see if you come up in the database. Sorry for jumping in your mouth, by the way. I've found it's the best way to get Cat's attention. You all are a strange sort, always looking off into the distance with an air of superiority. You, with just four legs and your big slow brains. The wolf spider tapped away on his tiny keyboard. As I thought, you are not on the list for this trash district. Uh, I'm not sure I... Cat! You're back! Oh my gosh, did you come back to hang out with me? This is so exciting! Did you see any wolves? Sasha came over and stood next to Cat. Reggie, he's with me. He's my new friend we met the other day at dumpster number 2271, and we really clicked. Sasha's whiskers were caked with frosting from a half-eaten donut. The wolf spider was not amused. He's not on the list. And I've told you, call me Reginald. Okay, I'll try to remember that. But do you remember last week I saved you from the bat that wanted to eat you? Remember how I went right up to the bat and I said, Get out of here, you bat, and leave my friend Reggie alone because he doesn't want to be eaten today. Or ever, I think. At least I would never want to be eaten by a bat. I guess you might feel differently. I don't know, but you sure seemed happy when he flew away. Do you remember that? Reginald scowled. (sighs) I remember. The spider looked around, as if there might be someone watching them. Fine. He's got five minutes. And it's Reginald. Hear that, cat? And next time you come into this district without proper permissions... Okay, thanks, Reggie. Oops, I mean Reginald. The wolf spider grumbled to himself and scurried up the side of the nearest building. Don't mind him. He seems really angry and dissatisfied with his life, but I think it's just a friend. Cat's mind filled with questions. Why was a wolf spider guarding trash cans? How were the trash districts organized? Did all the street cats have to get permission to eat from them? Who gave them permission? And how could he go about trying to get it? But Cat's stomach growled loudly, and he only had five minutes. 
so he decided to stick with why he came in the first place. I'm starving. Come on, I know where the good stuff is. With a flick of her tail, Sasha motioned for Kat to follow her to a trash can down the block. You would not believe a human stir away. It's bananas. I don't really like bananas. Oh, Kat, you're funny. Here you go. Sasha dragged out a half-eaten cheeseburger and tossed it to Kat. Kat lunged at it and tore it apart. Sasha scrounged around and dragged out some dirty chicken nuggets. Some tiny human must have dropped these on the ground. Like I said, can't get over what these people throw away. They're really weird about dirt. It's like they don't want to eat it or something, but dirt has lots of good stuff in it. You know what I mean? But humans do have really big slow brains. So you have to forgive them for not thinking all this through. They're doing their best is what Paul says. Of course, he does make up a lot of stories, so I don't really go by what Paul says. They spent the next few minutes eating. Cat felt full quickly, his stomach having shrunk in the past couple of days. Thank you, seriously, Cat said when he'd finished. You're so welcome. The sun was out, and the two felines stretched out on a sunny strip of sidewalk. Cat's mind went a little fuzzy from the food and the sun. He winked his eyes closed. So where do you usually get your food? Sasha peered at Cat with a curious look. What do you mean? Well, the human trash is good and all, but where do you get most of your food? This is where I get all of my food. Cat opened his eyes and looked at her. All of your food? But don't you catch mice? Don't you, you know, hunt? Sasha nodded, finally understanding. Sometimes I do, but it's hard to get enough food that way. Nearly impossible. Cat looked at Sasha's thin frame. As a house cat, she'd be considered terribly underweight. A stark new thought dropped into Cat's mind. You rely on people, don't you? Cat asked, sitting up straight. People? Yeah, loads of people. A whole city full. Without them, it would be hard to find food and water because they make the pond I drink out of. Also, once I found this teeny hat and it fit on my head. It's really, really hard to find hats my size. Also, by the way, it's really hard to find suspenders that fit me. And even when I do, I don't have pants, so it makes it really tricky to use the suspenders. Anyway, I wouldn't have any of that stuff without the people. Kat looked around, as if seeing the city for the first time. Impossibly tall buildings... Flat roads filled with wheel boxes, all made by people. Hmm. So, it's not that much different than what I had. I relied on two humans. You rely on a city full. Oh, wow, yeah, what an interesting connection to make. Same deal, more humans, plus rain, snow, ice. Have you seen ice? It's a nightmare. Paul tells me it's made of water, but I don't see how that could be true, and I've told you how he makes up stories, so. Oh, and let's see, no heat, no regular meals, no, let me guess, refrigerators. I've seen them being taken out of trucks. You get to sit inside those on really hot days, right? Not exactly. No pillows, no treats, none of those little mouse toys, no doctors when you're sick, no hairdressers, no laser shows, no catnip. What are those? Sasha asked her ears perking up. Oh, uh, never mind. They sat in silence for a moment. Cat opened his mouth to speak, but something leapt into it. He spat it out. It was Reginald again. I said five minutes. Relax, Reggie. Oh, sorry, Reginald. Does it look like we're anywhere near a trash can? He cannot be in this district without proper permissions. And trust me, fella, I will be filling out an incident report with your name on it. So good luck getting permissions in this town anytime soon. I'm on my way out, Cat said. Cat, you don't have to. It's fine. I I have somewhere to be anyway. And thank you for the food and for the rest. And thank you, Reginald. Before Sasha could protest further, Cat strode down the street and was lost 
in the thicket of humans on the city sidewalk. As he left, he heard Reginald stamping his eight little feet on the ground. Cat padded through the streets, his belly full and his head swimming. How was the wildest cat he knew, the one who scrounged for food and slept outside, just as dependent on people as he had been? As Cat made his way out of the city and back into the tree-lined neighborhood, he remembered the colonel. He had to find someone who might help him make sense of what he'd seen the night before. He had an idea of who that someone might be. As Cat approached the Duchess's sunroom, he heard the sound of little feet running. The chipmunk guard scrambled through Cat's legs, holding his golden flag. Ahem, who goes there? You don't remember me? I was just here the other day. I repeat, who goes there? Quincy, your hollering has damaged the very delicate hairs in my inner ear. Go be of use. Some of the shrews have kept their precious books past the due dates. You must collect them at once. With penalties, you know what that requires. Yes, Duchess. The chipmunk scampered off. (sighs) Hard to believe, but he's much more useful than my last guard. Uh, what, what happened to your last guard? I ate him. Cat gulped, momentarily forgetting that he was a cat with sharp claws and not a chipmunk. The Duchess let out one of her long, strange laughs. I'm joking. You're quite serious, aren't you? My last god did not collect overdue penalties from the shrews with any regularity. I banished him. Uh Uh-huh. Cat suddenly remembered he had come to speak with the Duchess by choice. Uh, I came to talk to you. I thought you might have some insights to offer. The Duchess's piercing green eyes gleamed at this. Cat was about to speak further when they were interrupted by the Duchess's human. He padded into the room wearing woolen slippers and went over to the bookshelf. Could have sworn I left that book right here. The Duchess locked eyes with Cat and raised a brow. Then she let out a severe meow. Meow! And the human scurried from the room. Uh, that book he's looking for, the shrews have it. I see. Well, you said you needed my insights. Yes, Do you happen to know the colonel? The duchess sighed as if it took great energy to care about this conversation. We are acquainted. Then you know that he's a part-timer, yes. The duchess began cleaning herself. A part-timer? He rules over his dominion part of the time. The rest of the time he... Prowls. His word, not mine. I do not prowl. It is most undignified. Cat thought back to when he met the colonel after falling asleep under the wheelbox. When I met him, he made it sound like no cat should ever live in a human box. But I know he does. I don't get it. I see. You poor dear. This must be terribly confusing for you. Allow me to explain in words you may understand. The things cats say and the things cats do don't always line up. 
It's Katnitcha. Sorry, what, what was that last word? Katnitcha. The nature of cats. My apologies, I did say I would use words you'd understand. It's hard to remember how very little you understand. Cat gave a weak smile. Cats have a tendency to say one thing and do another. But why? Why would the colonel talk about house cats the way he did when he knew he'd be sleeping in a warm bed that night? Perhaps he's conflicted about his station life. Not all who are born into royalty feel comfortable with the responsibility. As they say, with great power comes great responsibility to preside over shrews and their precious books. You think he's conflicted? Life is not either or. Life takes place in the great in-between. At that moment, Quincy arrived, swaying beneath a stack of books atop his head. Quincy, I take it you collected the appropriate overdue penalties from the shrews. Yes, Duchess. Good. There are no exceptions. They're either on time or late. No in between. Cat felt a headache coming on. He said his goodbyes and found himself back on the sidewalk. He still had no answers after all this. His mind went to Sasha, who lived her whole life outdoors, free but scrounging for food from passersby. He thought of the colonel, who was wild one minute and a lap pet the next. And he thought of the duchess, who lived a life confined to a human box, but who reigned over both humans and animals alike. Which one of them was doing it right? When Cat had set out on this adventure, he knew, just knew, he was meant to be wild. But now, he was no longer sure what that even meant, or whether it was the right path at all. Cat trotted down the street. He had no idea where to go or what to do next. He looked up at the sky, the endless sky, the sky that on that first day seemed like it could swallow him up into a great blue eternity. I need a sign, he said. Universe, please. I don't know what to do. Just give me a sign. And as he lowered his eyes from the clouds above, he saw a sign. It was attached to a tree. It said, Beloved Cat, Lost. Cat felt a lump form in his throat as he moved closer to the tree. There was a mailbox next to it, and he leapt on top so he could look at the sign. There was a picture of a cat. It was a tabby cat with an M pattern on its forehead and swirling stripes going down its side and through its tail. The cat had big, searching eyes. Its fur looked sleek and well-maintained. Beneath its picture, there was a name. Whiskers. Cat blinked. His eyes felt itchy. He shook his head from side to side and kept reading. Our much-beloved, darling, brown tabby cat, Whiskers, Whiskers is missing. missing. He's an expert at getting out of a collar, so we stopped trying to make him wear one. Instead, you'll recognize him by the white blotch on his left back foot. He's the sweetest cat you'll ever meet, but also fiercely independent and clever. Whiskers may run away from you, but if you are able to reach him, he enjoys head scratches. Just don't touch his tummy or under his chin. If you see Whiskers, please return him to us. 
He helped me get through a very difficult time in my life last year. Time in my life I miss him terribly. And I miss him terribly. He's an important member. He's an important member of our family. There was a number to text, an email address, a fax number, a pager number, and a street address. Cat looked down at himself. His matted fur had been swept in all directions by the wind, but he could still see the swirling stripes down his side. He swiveled his head to look at his back left foot, where there was indeed a white blotch covering his paw. Cat tried to make sense of the sign. Fiercely independent, important member of our family. Cat thought back to last year. He hadn't thought much of it at the time, but now he could remember his human crying a lot. She'd let him sleep next to her for months, which was a treat. She was always calling him over, whiskers, having him sit with her on the couch in her lap. Kat hadn't understood that she was extra affectionate because she needed him. This was new information. Cat had lived in a human box for years, understanding that he relied on them. He needed them to survive, and he kind of resented it. He had never understood that they relied on him. They didn't need him for food or water or to scratch them behind the ears. That would be funny. No, apparently they needed him for love. In all of his travels the last few days, Cat had spoken to three very different felines with three very different perspectives on life. Not one of them had mentioned love. Cat realized none of these cats had all the answers, and none of them could fully answer the questions he had about his own life. Cat looked into the eyes of the cat on the sign. He felt like he was seeing himself for the first time. He did look fiercely independent. He did look clever. Cat jumped down from the mailbox. That was a few weeks ago. Now, Cat sits on his window perch, watching a plane trace across the sky. He feels a light breeze drift through his fur. A few days after his return, he taught himself how to crack open the window, just a touch to feel closer to the outdoors. Cat also has some new entertainment. While he was missing, his human person got creative. She put a hummingbird feeder right outside Cat's favorite window, hoping it would draw him back home. When he did come back, she believed it was because of the bird feeder. Cat allowed her, with her big slow brain, to continue believing that. Only he knows the whole story. Cat's human box no longer feels like a place he needs to escape. It feels like home base. A place to relax between adventures. Because, yes... Cat still goes on adventures. He makes it out of the house at least once a week to lie in the sun, to glare at caterpillars, to paw at stink bugs, to prowl. He learned a new trick just a couple days ago. There's a trellis that he can climb up to get on the roof of the human box. On a warm afternoon, there is no better place to lounge than on those sun-baked shingles. From up there, Cat can gaze up at the endless sky, watching the clouds. He can look out at the woods and sometimes glimpse deer dipping their heads to eat leaves. On top of a human-built structure, he has found a commanding perch. He relishes these moments. He drinks them up. He gets his fill for about 45 minutes. And then he slips inside. Sometimes he still has feelings of being locked in. When he feels that way, 
He channels the Duchess. We are royalty. He tells himself he's a prince. Cat looks upon his humans and nods his head. Yes, I shall allow these people to serve me once more. They stoop to refresh his water bowl. I presume that is filtered water, he thinks. I shall taste it. And if it is not, I shall drink from the toilet bowl instead, Cat says, not knowing how water works. When he is feeling powerless, Cat reminds himself he has the power to cause certain people's eyes to swell shut simply by being near them. Cat still rolls his eyes when dogs stride by, heads held high, jauntily leading their owners down the sidewalk. You will never get to chase that rabbit, Cat thinks. He keeps a lookout for any more cats on leashes, but he hasn't seen any. Maybe the humans are capable of learning. On one of Cat's adventures, as he drinks from a stream and cleans himself, a small house cat wanders over, looking anxious. First time out, huh? Cat says. Is it that obvious? <laughs> you reek of vanilla. Cat could see the house cat turning something over in her mind. Is this the better life? She says. Being out here? Cat sighs and looks up at the clouds. I can't answer that for you. All I can say is, be grateful and stay wild in spirit. <laughs>